Hello, hello, teachers. I hope everybody is safe. Uh, back again. Uh, as a reminder, just let me just state categorically that uh, this channel basically caters to teachers of English. Um, I'd be only too happy if, if uh, the other subject teachers find this of any assistance, but uh, English is our game, so that's where we are going to uh, play it. Um, thank you for all the love that you've been sharing while you've been viewing the videos. I appreciate that. It's, it's very, very encouraging. Happy to be of assistance. Now, in the, in the previous video, we, we talked about the first part of uh, the chapter, Deep Water. Today, we are going to be dealing with the uh, second part, as it were. And uh, it's the same uh, lesson three. It's Art Integrated Learning. And uh, this is from the textbook uh, Flamingo. But before I proceed, there is something that I'd like to share with you for the first part. I was surfing and I, and I just came across this. I would reckon that, um, remember we showed a lot of posters and illustrations, etc. You could very easily do it with this one shot film too. It's called Fears. Okay, I've just put in some snips of that film. It's a 2015 film. It's beautiful. This, as you see, is fear. You can see this one over here, all different kinds of fears, and it's going to generate a lot of reflective questions, uh, and, and it's going to be very interesting, right? So if, if, if a child uh, chooses to uh, sort of role play it, you know, one person can be the fear and the other people can sort of role play whatever they saw or, you know, express their kind of fear. It'll be a great do in the classroom, right? Now that was for part one. For part two, uh, I'm going to keep showing this to you again and again till it absolutely sinks in, right? Uh, God willing, uh, later on, uh, after a couple of months, once the exams are over, new session starts, we'll be talking about the second aspect, right? So, so the first aspect of art integrated learning, once again, it's, it, it's, it works very well if you sort of, um, uh, how do I say, open, open the uh, lesson thematically with it, right? So now we finished with the first part where we talked about uh, fear and reasons for fear. Today, the second part, uh, we are going to be talking about the experience and feelings. You know, when Douglas was actually pushed into uh, the pool and, and uh, his experience and feelings and all that he went through when he, he was in the pool, right? So as always, uh, this is going to be about the teaching period, the introduction. This is standard for me because I'm talking about AIL, okay? And this, this is the... Uh, uh, chunk that, that I would recommend that you go with for this particular AIL, right? So uh, the learning objectives for me for AIL, not the whole, not the whole teaching unit. You, you're very good at doing that. So um, that the students will be able to enact or narrate a likely drowning incident, okay? Distinguish between varied usage uh, of, of drowning, okay? There are different ways that a person can drown uh, in context, I mean, and discuss and list what a person who is drowning might experience physically or mentally, okay? And the kind of art that uh, I'm saying that can be integrated could be acting, role play, uh, uh, when I say acting, I mean basically theater elements, role play, drawings for story narration, yeah? You could use those, movie posters, Hindi songs, doodling, so different kinds of things that I've used here, you, you'll get to see, right? Let's, let's proceed, right? Uh, um, again, I'm reminding you, do not stuff your lesson with everything. Make an informed choice. What is it that you like? And what is that one little thing that you would want to do, right? Uh, with, with, with a different class, you could do a different thing. With one section, you could do another thing. I leave it to you, right? You could modify on whatever I am uh, uh, showing you, okay? So uh, I would say that we could begin with acting. You walk into the class, virtually or otherwise, and you simply say, act of drowning, right? So, um, you would probably say, now imagine that uh, unfortunately you've had an accident and you're in water and you can't really surface. 
could you sort of all act? So all they have to do is give you that facial expression, right? And, and when they're doing it, you watch it for a couple of seconds or maybe five, and then you simply sh shout a statue, all right? And uh, then you unstatue a few, one particular row, ask them to look at others' expressions and so on, right? Uh, I'm not going to talk about the virtual classroom much. It's, it's done even in the virtual classrooms when you say all videos off, a certain set of videos open, uh, on, like I, like I talked about um, in, in, the, in the previous video as well. So that's one way of opening with a bang there. And then you could ask them what they were feeling, what got, they have to think to give that expression, right? Okay, another thing. You just, you know, sort of mix and match some stick figures and you just show this on the smart board or, or, or present this and uh, or you could draw it out on the blackboard, depending on where you are, what's the connectivity, etc. Right. And you simply say that you would want them to act this out. You've not put in any dialogues here. So as a group or a pair, they could simply act this out. You know, I would reckon a group would be better. Yeah, so they could act this out and what has, what is it that has happened? Uh, what went on? Why did it happen? So they want to show everything over the role play, right? Okay, that's one. Uh, we could also go with narration. So we could say, look at these. All right, there are three different uh, story, story sketches. I've taken them from different parts uh, uh, over the net, but they're all, they have one thing that in common that you can see someone drowning, right? And asking for help and so on. So you have these, somebody is saving them and uh, the other person is asking for help perhaps, right? So now what is it that you would ask them to do? So you'd ask them to narrate a story except that we would ask them to do it in pairs, in two different versions. So partners in the classroom, they're basically uh, sort of looking at the same stimulant. You could allow them to pick any, right? And then you say your A, your B. Okay, so each, each pair is A or B. And then you label this. You say, okay, the rescuer is A, and the person who's drowning over here, as you can see, is B. Now, both the rescuer and the person who's drowning is going to narrate the same incident from a different perspective, right? And that is what you want them to do. Say so it's, it's just a 45 second narration that you have. It's nothing much, but you have to do it. You have to see and then see how, you know, what this person says. And so this person is going to talk about what caused him. Um, I think they're all hymns. Or this could be a her, what caused him or her to, to sort of, you know, have this accident or get to drowning or almost drowning. And then, you know, what is the perspective of A? There are sharks here. So it also, they could also talk about where this incident took place. And if, if we are smart, we could also sort of look at this as a, as a, as a, as a speaking activity just an activity, not an assessment in the classroom, right? So there, there are perspectives and we get a couple of them to come up in the classroom and present. Okay, that, that's always done. You're, you're very good at that. Okay, for discussion, this is my favorite because this really triggers, okay? So I would use some movie posters, right? I would show this one. The movie says The Drowned. Okay, and then I would show this one, all right? Because remember our objective, the different usage of drowning? And then my question would be, which movie clearly talks about drowning in water, right? So it's very clear which movie talks about drowning in water, no matter the genre of, of whether it's a horror film, etc. cetera, okay? Uh, why do you say so? You know, so they'd come up with something. What could the second movie be about? What could be about a drowning man? And he's clearly not in water right now. He's holding something. So it's all about observation as well. Uh, creative, critical thinking. Okay, connecting them to the real world as well. What are the situations that make someone feel this way? What feelings are movie makers wanting to convey with the use of drowning here in the second one? 
right? So you, you'd get all kinds of uh, answers. We do say drowning in anxiety, drowning in self-pity. Mm -hmm. so, so you have different usages. I'm sure they're going to come out. The rest, I'm sure you will do it. Look at the next one. Further discussion. Show them a picture like this. I mean, how, how beautiful. Okay, this is art, isn't it? So why is this artistic representation relevant in the current times? What do you think the artist has used to represent his or her ideas? We are the drowning. You even have sharks here. So I wonder what they're trying to show. Okay, how is the helping hand significant? Okay, and then once you have this discussion, you could obviously let them have some free talk and talk about it. Again, a different use on interpretation of drowning. And one last one, a beautiful number, a lovely song. They are, they are uh, young adults in class 12. You can uh, sort of show all these resources that I'm talking about, right? And uh, it's by Clinton Kane. Uh, it's called Drown. And I've, and I've put all the links for the resources I've used, most of them, um, uh, you know, in the description below, uh, you know. So this song can be used as a listening skills resource as well. You could ask them to fill up, you could ask them to uh, uh, sequence in the correct order, depends what kind of worksheet you want to create, right? So it's a, it's a great resource, it's connected to the chapter. Hmm? Does the singer sing about drowning in water? What in the song suggests so? so you know, and ask them to sing it aloud. So it's going to be a lot of fun in class. Why does a singer use the drown metaphor? Okay, so this, this song is about how, how he feels that the person, his beloved or the person he loves, uh, you know, he drowns without that affection. So he's talking about that. So he's drowning in, in that kind of anxiety of separation. And do you think the experience the singer sings about is as traumatic as drowning? Okay, so that that is why why not, and and they'll and they'll they'll come up with beautiful answers. The most important thing is that you've introduced that yes, it is traumatic, and what are the feelings? What are the experiences? How does it connect to other things around us? Right? Okay. Uh, in groups, create an extra stanza for the lyricist of this song. Supposing you say you want one more, you know. You want one stanza to be replaced with what you think is important, then, then probably. And then sing them aloud, sing out your lyrics, okay? So they already know, they've listened to the song, they already know, you could allow them to prep this, uh, give them some time, they could come back with this in a couple of days, no problem, right? The most important thing is that they'll create along the same lines, okay? So what are they experiencing? They will experience that kind of anxiety that irrespective of whether it's a person drowning in water or otherwise feeling, hmm? okay? Uh, look at this further. Like I said, don't use everything. Use any one aspect. I've shown you stories. I've shown you a movie clip. I've shown you a, 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 a song. You have some Hindi songs here. Dil Duba, Duba Duba, Dubare Duba. Okay, now that's, that's drowning, right? So my questions are, do all these songs talk about the idea of drowning in water? What feelings are the lyricists wanting to convey with the use of duba? You know, what are they talking about? Okay, Is, are they doing it voluntarily, the people who are saying it? Hmm? So there are different contexts and different real world experiences that you're bringing into the classroom, right? Okay, let's continue. So now you would say, imagine and list, okay? And you would show them that these are doodles. So you would probably say, okay, look at this person. You could very quickly do this. I, I did this on paint. You could very quickly do this on the blackboard uh, and, and you could, or, or the whiteboard, uh, you know, here. You could say drowning, this is the person. You could definitely refer to Douglas because they know you've already done part one. And then you could say, what do you think? What do you think he would be experiencing? Fear, anxiety, uh, body paralysis really, racing heartbeat, adrenaline. Uh, what are the things that dry mouth, if possible in water, I don't know. They might say a lot of things, get them to do this in pairs, and then yes, discuss. 
They could be so many things very quickly. So ask them to make Douglas Drowning a very quick stick figure and what he feels, right? And they, they'll do it. They, they'll definitely do it, okay? So now you've got them to sort of, you know, uh, get empathetic there. You're, you could even ask them to simulate this in the classroom. It's entirely up to you, right? Now, what we talked about in the learning objectives, we've done everything, have a look. We talked about enacting, narrating a likely drowning incident. So we did that story bit. Now you could choose which one thing you want to do, right? It, 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 it's just a tool. You can't just overload everything, right? Uh, or you could do distinguish between varied usages of drowning. You could do that, okay, on the side. Okay, so we've done that. And then I did say discuss and list what a person who is drowning might experience physically, mentally. So we did that as well. So they drew it out. You showed them a doodle. Okay, so that's also done. Right, so that, that's part two that we did. And we are uh, going to come back with part three, which is the concluding part. That's one of my favorite parts, actually, to be honest, because that talks about positivity, how to overcome uh, the fear, etc. Now, I've been told to remind you to do, once again, to subscribe. Uh, I believe that's a trend. It's something that we are supposed to say when we are talking on YouTube. So also, please check out the resource links below in the description, right? Uh, and it would be really lovely if, if some of you connect with me um, on, on Facebook, et cetera, where you could share your kind of art integrated learning uh, uh, resources. It would be lovely, you know, for, for all teachers of English to, to have a look at, right? So, I mean, this is our space. This is our family. Hmm? We are doing this for us. So it would be lovely. A collaboration is the key, right? So like I always say, don't forget, Art Integration and uh, English. Uh, we are going to do Flamingo part three. That's the concluding part. Till then, stay safe, stay empowered. Keep rocking. Bye-bye. Thank you.